Clinical trials have recently been announced for remdesivir, a medication used to potentially treat COVID-19 or the coronavirus of 2019-2020. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. For those of you guys who don't know, my name is Edgeman and I'm currently a fourth year pharmacy student and I enjoy making these videos about common questions patients have about medications or any healthcare related topics so make sure you subscribe for more content. Now to the rest of the video. I previously made a video about remdesivir and how this drug works and how it relates to the COVID-19 crisis. But in this video, we're going to be specifically talking about the clinical trials that are going to be started. The clinical trials are going to take place in the University of Nebraska's Medical Center in Omaha. And this is the first clinical trial in the United States for medication to help treat COVID-19. In my previous video about remdesivir, we talked about how it was potentially effective in treating COVID-19. But because it was a single patient, so it was a single case study, we cannot confirm causation that it was actually remdesivir that was causing the increased recovery time for this patient. It could have been other variables that weren't accounted for and that we needed a randomized clinical trial to be able to confirm causation that was actually remdesivir that was effective in treating this patient with COVID-19. So now that we have an actual clinical trial that's set to start soon, we can now hopefully, uh, the, the, the results, we can now determine if remdesivir is actually an effective treatment for COVID-19 because now we're going to have both a experimental group and a placebo group. Let's briefly talk about the basic concepts of a randomized control study. So in an RCT, there's both a experimental group and a placebo group. The placebo group is sometimes called the control group. So in the experimental group, you give to the participants what you're trying to test or what you're trying to prove. So in our case, you're giving them the medication remdesivir and in the control group or the placebo group, you're giving something that um, doesn't cause any change or any effect to the patient. So this could be like normal saline or like a placebo pill, like a sugar pill. Um, it's something to not cause any change. And the reason why they have a control group is to create a standard or a basis of comparison for the experimental group to see how w different was the experimental group compared to the control group and is that difference significant enough to say that remdesivir was actually effective in treating patients with COVID-19 for example in our case. Furthermore, this study is a double blind study. Double blind meaning that both the participants in the study and the researchers or scientists in the study don't know wh which of the subjects are in the control group and which of the subjects are in the placebo group. And this is done to reduce bias. For example, if I was a, a patient in this study um, and I was getting an infusion of a medication, I wouldn't know if this medication is actually remdesivir or it's actually normal saline because that would cause bias in terms of how I would feel or how I would think because I would say, oh, because I'm getting remdesivir, this, it must be working and so I might act a different way, I might say certain things to like make convince the other researchers that hey it's actually effective and that's biased and that you cannot use that as viable data because we need to use this data to apply it to the mass market or the mass population and it has to be unbiased. Or if I was a researcher in this case, if I'm on the other end and I'm reviewing a patient, I'm seeing how different they are if I'm assessing them. If I know this patient actually got remdesivir, I might be, I might not be impartial. I might be saying, hey, this, this patient improved better because he was on or she was on remdesivir. That's not a proper way of doing research. And that's why they do a double blind. So everyone who's in the study and everyone who's researching the patient who are in the study don't know which part they're in. And that, and that reduces bias significantly. Now that we've reviewed the basic concepts of a randomized control study, let's talk about what is actually happening in this remdesivir trial. So in the experimental group, uh, patients are going to get 200 milligrams remdesivir infused on day one. And then for each day of treatment after that, they're going to get 100 milligrams of remdesivir infused each day for up to 10 days. And in the control group, they're just going to get uh, infusion of inactive ingredients, so not the act active remdesivir. So after the conclusion of this study, we'll have a better understanding of how effective is remdesivir in treating COVID-19. Hopefully it does show some significant difference compared to the placebo group so that now we can start treating all these patients infected with COVID-19. I hope you guys enjoyed watching my video and learned something. If you guys did, please give me a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel for more content. Until then, I'll see you guys next time.